Um, good afternoon, Facebook, or good morning, depending on what part of the country you are in. I am live with Steve of Rough Cut Rollins. Um, he is a businessman and an author. Uh, he is part of our business mastermind group. And I just wanted to read his bio to you because it is fantastic. It is definitely where I want to aspire to be as a business person. In 2004, he developed and created a portfolio of five companies with a presence in five states that generated $23.5 million with an initial investment of $15,000, all done within four years. He is the author of the best-selling book, the Roadmap to Building a Million Dollar Business, businessman, entrepreneur, owner of SBA Solutions, LLC. He is based out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He's a full-time student in college he, that will receive a degree in business in December 2018. So we got a little Rodney Dangerfield back to school action going on. Um, He's active in his community with volunteering through Campus Impact and Civic Honor Society. I just want to read off some of the um, awards and achievements that he has received um, in the past. 2006, Nevada Businessman of the Year and featured in the Wall Street Journal. 2009, nominee for Arizona Businessman of the Year. Uh, 2017, recipient of the President's Leadership Scholarship. Appointed Honorary Chairman to the Business Advisory Council. Recipient of the Congressional Medal of Distinction for Outstanding Leadership in Business and Contribution to Local Economies. Um, commenting on Mr. Rollins' selection for that, Congressman Reynolds said Mr. Rollins has served as Honorary Chairman to the Business Advisory Council and has provided much needed support. This award could not have gone to a more deserving candidate. And that was from Congressman Reynolds. So, um, man, this uh, the resume, the awards, the accolades, it is definitely awesome. I'm so excited to have uh, Steve on. When I just saw his little blurb and just um, the information about his book, I was like, man, we got to connect and get Steve on the show. Um, Steve... Um, just, and then I will post all of Steve's um, social media handles and, and URLs and things like that for his business. Um, currently, right now, what is your primary business um, or the business that you are most interested in developing? My company is called uh, SBA Solutions, and we're a consulting firm in which we help uh, aspiring uh, entrepreneurs to uh, get into their first business or uh, we help existing businesses uh, uh, reach the next level of the round. Okay. Awesome, awesome. All right, so uh, let's, let's just uh, get to know each other a little bit more. When you are not developing and growing the business, what do you do for fun? How do you blow off steam? How do you recharge the batteries? <laughs> uh, a couple of different ways. Uh, one of the rooms and uh, my apartment here uh, turned into a, uh, a music studio, okay. and uh, I like to play guitar, and I, I love music, uh, so I, I mess around in there uh, a lot. Um, I like working out there in my garage. I, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, motorsports, okay. and if I can get it to go faster, uh, then I'll do that. Uh, I ride every now and then okay. and uh, I like to uh, on Saturdays uh, me and my dog we go out and uh, we'll go do something together whether it's to explore a dog park or uh, maybe walk some kind of trail around the lake or something like okay. that but awesome. uh, that's pretty much the extent I'm a boring individual oh yeah right <laughs> boring anything but that um, talk to me what is a bucket list vacation for you something that you, you want to accomplish and just man say that that was awesome I've had a uh, passport ever since I was 16 okay. and uh, my first trip was over to Europe I bounced around over there and spent an entire summer and uh, uh, so travel isn't anything new to me and uh, I've been a lot of places not all of the places that I would like to be I'd like to uh, visit uh, St. Petersburg Square in Russia because of the history of the people and how uh, St. Petersburg Square was built. 
so I really don't have a bucket list uh, where I would want to go on vacation. Uh, but if I were to pick one, I think that I'd like to go down to Key West and do some exploring. All right. Some pirate exploring. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. 12, uh, w you know, we're studying Napoleon Hill, and I'm sure um, when you're um, de working with business leaders, you talk about goals. You personally, what are your 12 month goals for success? Keep doing what I'm doing right now. I uh, I read a lot. I invest a lot of time into my business and uh, getting it prepared for the October 2018 launch. Okay. Um, what are you launching in October 2018? SBA Solutions. Okay. Right now, it's not in a full operational mode or anything okay. like that. We're doing the networking. We're meeting the people. Uh, we're developing the websites. Uh, uh, making arrangements for office space. Uh, we've got uh, employees to uh, bring on board. Uh, so, uh, okay. As you are um, forming and designing SBA solutions, what what can you confidently say? I our organization will do this better than anybody else. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, uh, SBA Solutions, what is their um, their strongest value add? What, what do you want um, clients to really be like, man, working with them, they are the best in this? Well, I have a proven track record, okay. and uh, once people see my results, mm -hmm. uh, basically... Uh, improve and enhance uh, your overall business structure and uh, take you off the charge really okay. I mean. great great um, describe the avatar of your um, of the of the client that you are looking for now when you say avatar I'm assuming you you know like some kind of a cartoon well, thing no, or no, well I, in the marketing world they say the client that you are gonna hit the most triples, doubles, um, home runs with, uh, they're a certain age or they're a certain category of business or they're even a certain revenue level. Um, the ones that you feel like this is my prime target and I will have a lot of success with them. Thoroughbreds. Okay. Thoroughbreds. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, they work hard, mm -hmm. they work strong. Uh, and they don't stop until the task is complete. And uh, right now I have a couple of different clients. Uh, they range in age. I think the one is uh, 23, maybe on up to about 40. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't look at those kinds of things. I just uh, – uh, invest my time into the uh, into the thoroughbreds okay. the real winners the horses okay all right um now i want you to be a little bit greedy on this one on this answer if if you could land a monster client once a month for the next 12 months um and they're going to be putting a lot of uh, a lot of revenue back into sba solutions for you what type of um business or um, company would you really like relish working with? I like working with businesses of all types. Mm -hmm. It's more the people that uh, uh, I enjoy working with most and the ones that I like working with most are those that um, you know there's an old adage out there you can lead a horse to water but you can't make a drink well, it's the ones that drink. Those are the ones that are going to be successful. Those are the ones that are serious about their future. And so that, that that's those are my dream clients, the ones okay. that uh, uh, take their successes right. seriously. Right. So essentially you are interviewing the, the potential clients and, and they have to have the right character and mindset for you to want to even talk to them or engage them. 
Yeah, absolutely, because uh, I scrutinize. Yeah. And if I don't think that you're committed to your future and your success, uh, why should I invest into you? Because uh, I'm a successful person, right. and I surround myself with successful people. Yeah. And uh, I don't have the time uh, to be um, messing around with somebody that uh, I have to carry. Yeah. And so I scrutinize my clients uh, based on uh, their drive, their motivation to succeed, and to make a difference. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're working on a training class, and I, I tell, uh, in the training class, I say, you choose the clients. You can't, if, if you want to blame the client for something going sideways, at the end of the day, you chose them, and the f responsibility still falls back on you. Yeah, there's a bunch of crazy people out there, but it's our choice whether we're going to work with crazy people or work with people that are going to actually yield the proper results and be committed, you know, to the process and and what's going on. So that's definitely a huge thing, and I hope a lot more business owners can take hold of, you know, and and, and really do. Well, you know, really, there are no bad clients; they're just bad managers. Right. Really, is what it is. I mean, you can filter through, but everybody. Uh, has their issues, everybody has their concerns, everybody has their ideas of how their world uh, should be. Yeah. And uh, you have to work with them and you have to uh, put yourself in their shoes and look things from their pers look at things from their perspective from inside out and not always outside in. Yeah, because definitely. it's easy for us to uh, say, well, you need to stop drinking five cups of coffee every day. Well, that's looking on the inside or on the outside in. You're not looking from the inside out at the big yeah. picture. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I'm with a guy. I think potentially he would be a uh, he, he he sounds like a thoroughbred. Um, I'm talking to him about his business. What is a? But he's going to make a verbal complaint about his business. And when I hear that, that's going to be an indicator to me that I need to connect him with you. What is a verbal complaint that you love solving and then continuously improving with, with a client? If you hear somebody say, I wish I could start a business, I wish I was in business, um, I'm having problems with business development, I'm having problems with benefit structure, I'm having problems with uh, employee management, retaining employees, these types of things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not happy with my business, I think it's gone stale, then these are the types of uh, flags that uh, uh, you could spot and say, you know, I know a guy and uh, I think I should introduce you to it. Right. Right, so they're saying something like, "Man, you know, my revenue has really plateaued. I, I, I like year over year growth, but it's not happening. I, I really, I'm in a rut, or I'm kind of stuck." Yeah, usually it's uh, simple, basic stuff that gets overlooked, and sometimes there's more complex issues, and uh, you have to get to the root right. uh, in order to solve right. the problems. Right. Definitely, definitely. So. Um, who are uh, power partners in your business that um, tradition they might start to open up about their problems with another category of business, another professional service, and those professional services are some of the ones that you tradition that you are networking with, and they go, you know what, I think you might um, you might be a good candidate for a consultation um, with Stephen and SBA Solutions. Uh, that would be. Um Hmm. Media okay. introductions, right. like uh, I did with you and Sammy, right. uh, so that uh, I want to see other people succeed. Mm -hmm. And um, so networking, I think, is a, a big one. Um, finance, uh, finance, uh, you know, we all heard the statistics. Um, 67% of the population is $500 away from being bankrupt. Right. Uh, 
paychecks to paychecks, uh, all of these types of things. So uh, finance and then uh, legal issues as well. Lawyers, uh, which uh, Shahara yesterday uh, was a good contact to make. I yeah. appreciated uh, being a part of that interview yesterday and, and watching it. Uh, so uh, those would be the three. Yeah. Yeah. You know, business attorneys and consultants, it's funny. Um, they're, they're always trying to share good information for their clients and, you know, even, even just in the general marketplace. And it seems like certain business owners don't hear it. Then they get themselves into deep trouble and then they need to hire an attorney to get them out of it. Or then they need to, like, they hire a consultant um, to try to fix it. And when in fact, if you are a business owner that's proactive and thinking about, how to grow and how to improve, bring on a consultant and let them kind of point out the pitfalls so you don't make the same mistakes over again. You know, same you know yeah. 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 Uh, you know, sometimes you have to hit bottom before you can uh, rise to the top. And um, uh, people uh, just need uh, a little bit of help every now and then. And uh, it's not that we've done anything uh, bad or what have you it's just that um, you're traveling along and you've got blinders on and you only see what you know yeah. and this is comes from a lack of vision if you don't have vision uh, you can't see the future for what it can become yeah definitely um, so talk to me about your book uh, uh, when did you write that? Write your book. What is this? January. Uh, January two thousand eighteen. Yeah. I think it came out late November. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, first part of December is when it first came out. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And um, who's your audience for the book? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Roadmap to Building Million Dollars. It's on Amazon. Everybody can buy it from Amazon. It's on, on Amazon. It's on uh, Kindle. Um, you can go to my website, uh, stephenjrollins.com, and uh, get a free PDF download. Look at it that way. Okay. Uh, connect with me, and uh, you know, maybe I'll send you an autograph one. Yeah. Mike, uh, Mike has already posted the link to the comments. Mike Follett. Uh, I've, I've connected oh. with him. I know. We, Thanks, I guess, yeah. Mike. I appreciate that. Bob. Yeah, you know, I have to set up an interview with Mike as well. Um, so, who is the audience? Who do you hope will read that book and get inspired to to build a million dollar business? Who, who are you looking to speak to? From the statistics that I've been getting off the website, uh, Amazon, the reviews, the pictures that I've been uh, getting sent. Uh, we're all across the board. There doesn't seem to be any specific uh, gender or uh, age group or anything like that. It's uh, all seems to be people who uh, aspire to be in business, uh, but just really unsure how. Now, one of my clients, he's a, a pretty impressive young man, and uh, we met... Uh, few days ago had some lunch and uh, we discussed his business and uh, so also uh, you know they are people that uh, are in business and uh, um, they're good at some things but have no clue on another and typically that's in finance yeah. uh, managing their finances budgets uh, QuickBooks uh, things of that nature yeah Definitely, definitely. I mean, I watch, whenever you watch uh, Shark Tank, I don't know if you watch Shark Tank and shows like that, but when they start digging into what are your numbers, the business owner that has no idea of their cost of goods sold, um, their overhead, they just get eaten alive. They get eviscerated on that show. I mean, um, so to, to know your numbers, um, to know your percentages, to know what your cash flow is, it's definitely such an important part of a small business. So. I think people make finance more complicated than what it needs to be. It's just the word finance alone is enough to, you know, make anybody just do a 
collective gasp. And, well, you know, uh, we should probably talk about marketing right, right. now. Right. Uh, but uh, when I was working as a uh, senior business analyst for an international consulting firm, I don't think there was uh, not one individual who, um, when I came in to do the analysis, I'd say, hey, uh, pull me up a balance sheet or something like that. And they really wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. And uh, I think this is probably why so many people have uh, struggles with uh, finance and managing money these days. Yeah. And I just happen to be uh, really good at uh, managing and budgeting and, and, and making money. Right. <laughs> right. spending it too. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, um, when you think about the uh, the the American, let, let's just talk about you know um, the American business person. They, they start with a dream or a passion for something, right? And then their revenue grows to a certain point. Then the business of running the business starts to gobble them up, and then they go out of business, and then they hate it. They hate that business that was supposed to be their dream forever. Um, and hopefully, you know. But by reading your book and getting inspiration from you and really inspiring business owners to really focus on all aspects of their business, not just be the technical execution, whether you're the best kitchen you know, remodeler in your area, that's great. But once you get gobbled up by the business, this big like, man, I don't want to do I, I'll just go get a job at Home Depot or Lowe's on salary. Forget about you know, doing the small business thing. I think that's kind of that that's the pattern that you see for certain businesses when they don't have the consultation and they have coaching and even um, other business leaders around them to encourage them to, to, to focus on that stuff so well, this is a clear indication of fail, failing to invest in yourself yeah um, are you a part of organizations that uh, lift you up uh, such as like Toastmasters, right. public speaking. Um, and we tend to focus on what we know. And it's okay to just focus on what you know, but at least have some kind of idea in areas that you're unfamiliar with. And you can take these by taking certificate courses, meeting with mentors, uh, hiring consultants, uh, and keeping an open mind to what other people have to say. I've heard a lot of people uh, what sounded like, I'd like a suggestion, uh, when really all they want to do is bitch about something. Right. Right. And they won't take the steps or the actions necessary to uh, resolve those issues. And the other thing is, is that uh, I've noticed is that when people uh, first get into business, as you mentioned, the passion and fire that just, oh, this has just got to be done. Uh, it's when that money starts coming in. Okay. You're only making $30,000 a year and now you're making $100,000 a year. And now you're doing things that are fun and you're being uh, in parts of groups that uh, you go out, you spend more and these shiny things distract you and we forget our main goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you talked about investing in yourself as a business leader. Uh, what, is, what, what, in your opinion, is the best bang for, like, if a business leader says, I haven't invested in myself at all, what would be the first investment you would recommend to a business owner who is listening or watching? Um, do this, bang for the buck, it's going to be great, and you're going to thank yourself later. There's two separate categories, and I think they're pretty much parallel each other there. Uh, but I would have to say, uh, first is uh, QuickBooks okay. um, or some other financial accounting software in which you have some kind of bookkeeping system in place. And QuickBooks uh, instruction can is can be found all over the place. Uh, 
your local community college or your technical schools in which they offer a one week class for, you know, a hundred bucks, uh, tutorials from QuickBooks. There's even QuickBooks, uh, certified training people. Um, a lot of people just, uh, they, uh, overlook this and this contributes to a downfall in their business because they're not managing their finances. They're not using the tools that are available to them to generate reports and, and get an accurate picture of where exactly they stand. What you think in your mind and where you're actually at is two different things. Yeah. The other thing is, and I, um, uh, uh think that this is as, as important as well is that people um, they'll start a business and they operate as a sole proprietor and they fail to move on to the next levels of business so these would be the two areas that uh, I would suggest for people okay. to uh, the, focus on so the mindset of sole proprietor to then um, moving to that next level what what it kind of explain that a little bit more well as a sole proprietor you don't get the types of tax breaks or credits or deductions that you would get as a full-fledged business uh, with a, a legal entity such as S Corp or uh, LLC okay awesome awesome all right so here, here's a fun question I ask it for everybody on my show you got a time machine you're going to travel back to your 18-year-old self, pull him aside, and you're going to give that young man one word of advice. What would you tell th that, that young man? Well, I couldn't do it in one word. Uh, depending, on, depending on what area, what, uh, what time in my life. Now, if I'm going back to like when I'm about 16, I'm going to say, hey, stupid. <laughs> uh, but, you know... Uh, I've actually been, uh, I had to grow up fast and uh, um, work and uh, stuff. But uh, the th what I would tell myself, uh, I, dude, you're doing awesome. Just keep doing what you're doing. Right. That's what I would tell myself. Yeah. yeah Enjoy the journey. Yeah. Definitely. Enjoy the journey. Oh, and that mantra of yours, uh, I'll not go to the grave in a perfectly well-preserved body. Rather, I'm going to come round in third base, sliding in the home, all beat up, busted, and broken up, and bruised, shouting out, hell yeah, that was a hell of a ride. Yeah. You might want to back off of that just a tad, bud. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, you know, there are times, I mean, um, I'm 42, but there's times in my mind, I'm like, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak today. You know, I want to do it, <laughs> but the body is saying, not today, bro, so... Yeah, I definitely um, I hear you on that. So stay relentless, man. Stay relentless. Yeah. Work yeah. through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So you're on a stranded island, and there's a genie that's gonna bring you the same meal every single day. What would that be? You know, I seem to be a big fan of pizza, but I also. I'm a big fan of Mexican food. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not a burritos. And uh, so let's uh, ask for a carne asada pizza. How's that? Oh, carne asada pizza delivered every day by a genie. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, that's creative. That's good. Um, all right. Now, the, uh, the genie is going to return the next day and bring you a book. And then you're going to have to – what book would that be? to adjust to island life how to adjust to island life nice 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 you know um my my gut instinct answer for that was uh dale carnegie how to win friends and influence people and everybody's like you're on a stranded island by yourself why do you need that book but uh you know i i thought it was uh you know it's one of my favorite books that and napoleon hill think and grow rich so um as you've been going through think and grow rich with some of the other people in the mastermind um, in this early part of the study, what's been your biggest takeaway that has really um, even impacted you? 
Actually, my partner and I just got our books literally the other day. Okay. And uh, so there was a delay with Amazon for me. I got the workbook right away. Right. And then it took them a little over a week to send me the uh, book itself, the textbook itself, mm-hmm. and the same with my uh, partner. So uh, I imagine the two of us will be uh, getting together and uh, going over it and start trying to catch up to you guys okay. awesome awesome well we'll definitely continue to communicate um th- those are all the questions i have i really appreciate um steve connecting with me on facebook and you know um connecting me with some other key people that i'm going to um, definitely continue to grow my personal network with um i i did some uh, tornado work in oklahoma city so i look forward to going back um, and we'll uh, maybe we'll go um, get get some food at uh, was it what, what's the, uh, the is it the stockyards down the there? stockyards yeah, yeah. the cattlemen's we yeah. can go get you know that's the the history of that building that restaurant itself is yeah. just uh, unbelievable yeah. it was one in a poker game yeah yeah you know um so I did the lamb fries trick on my buddy who had never been there. He's like, yeah, we're going to uh-huh. get, get some lamb fries. And he goes, what are these? I go, just shut up and eat it. You know, and then he's like Googling his phone after. He's like, what did you do? I was like, did you like it? He's like, yeah, they tasted good, but come on. But you know what? Um, I think that's the part of cuisine is, you know, people have been consuming different parts of the animal uh, all throughout history. But, yeah, I love doing the lamb fries trick on people. Yeah, I had a uh, meeting with a client, well, a lunch meeting, and uh, – uh, he ordered up Rocky Mountain oysters, and uh, I said, "You know what you ordered up, right?" And he says, "Oh yeah, you know." He says, uh, "You know, oysters that come from the the uh, streams of Colorado there." And he looked at the at the waitress that with just as serious as you could be, and says, uh, "So those Rocky Mountain oysters are they pretty good size?" <laughs> I, I went ahead and I let him order it. And I waited for a while, and that's when I asked him, hey, do you know what you just ordered? And when I got done telling him, oh, yeah, I'll tell you, you never seen anybody go up out of that booth as fast as they could go chase that waitress yeah, down. Yeah. Hey, I need yeah. a cheeseburger or something. Yeah, yeah. I got I got uh, a comment um, on the live feed from Kevin Burpee. He's the principal adjuster in our company and the president. And he's like, that's why I don't go eat anywhere with you because I'll pull the lamb fries thing on him. He's a... Uh, Hamburger, meat and bread type of guy, you know, plain pizza, uh, plain pizza guy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. steak. Wow, well, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, well, um, everybody who is on Facebook, I will post all of his uh, social media um, links as well as a link to his website. You can go to his website and download the the PDF of the book. You can order his book on Amazon and gift it to someone who is thinking about um, starting their own business. Um, again, this was such an honor for me to be with such a, um, you know, a, a distinguished businessman and is still got a passion to continue to impact um, other, other business owners and leaders. So, um, again, uh, his, his link is in the comments. Connect with Steve. Check out the book. Um, and we're looking to see you do, um, make some serious waves in, in the business, um, business community uh, throughout the rest, next couple of years. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Sammy. All right, bye.